Next, we're going to talk about graphing square root functions as part of our Step 17 guided notes. A square root function is simply another type of function. And when we learn about new groups of functions, we always like to start with the parent function so we understand what it looks like as simply as possible. And then we will do many transformations to that square root function or radical function and see how that moves it around our coordinate graph. So if I were to just graph y equals radical x, that's the parent function, or f of x equals radical x. The way we make any graph is just with a t-table, if we're doing it by hand, when x is um, negative 1, Actually, I'm going to start even a little lower. I usually like to do negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, and 2, just to get things going. Well, if I put a negative 2 in for x right here, I can't take the square root of negative 2. So I would just say undefined. Same thing for a negative 1. We can't take the square root of negative 1 and get a real answer, so undefined. That means I can't graph these points. But 0, what's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. What's the square root of 1? One? 1. What's the square root of 2? It's a decimal, 1.57 I believe. I don't like to graph numbers like that. So instead I'm going to go to the next number that would give me an integer answer like 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. And you'll notice here these points are very easy to plot. 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and so on. I believe the next one would be uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. And you can see where the parent function comes from. When we look at this parent function, the domain is all positive numbers because when we think about domain, we're just looking at the x values. So as I move across this yellow line, when do I get to the graph? It starts right here. And from here to the right, I have the graph, not over here. This is where x is positive. We are going to use interval notation. So we would write 0, comma, infinity. It's okay if you don't put the positive next to infinity, you could just write it like this. We use a closed bracket because it does include 0. See on our table? x can equal 0. And then we use an open bracket because it never really stops with infinity. When we look at the domain, now we're looking at the y values up and down. So again, as I start at the bottom and go up, I don't get to my graph until here. And from here up, that's where the graph is as I go up. There is no graph down here when y is negative. So again, same thing, 0 to infinity intercepts. Where does it cross the x-axis? Right here at 0. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right here at 0. There is no symmetry with this function unlike the square root function. There was a line of symmetry straight down the center of it. That doesn't happen with a radical function. And behavior is x. Here's our x values. As we get closer and closer to 0, this graph approaches 0. As we go to the right towards infinity, this graph keeps going higher and higher and higher to infinity. So this is the left end, this is the right end. All right, let's try to focus on domain and range. Now, to find the domain, we're trying to find possible x values. So we're simply going to look at what's under the radical and think about what that means. If something is under a square root, it must be positive. 
this yellow bit must be positive. It must be bigger than or equal to zero. It can't be negative. And then we solve. So now I know that my domain, x must be greater than or equal to negative four. And in interval notation, I would write that as negative four to infinity. That's how I'm gonna find my domain. Similarly, to find my range algebraically, I'm going to take this x value and put it in f of negative four equals negative four plus four. See, I took out the x and put in negative four, and then I'm gonna simplify that. Zero. So my range, that's my lower limit of my range, is zero to infinity. Now let's take a look at this graphically. Let's go over to Desmos and type this in. Y equals the square root. To get the square root, I'm gonna click this button down here. It says show keypad, and I think it's off my screen a little bit. Let's move that down. There it is. Square root of x plus four. If you look at the graph here, you can see that compared to the parent function, in fact, let me put the parent function in blue here, y equals the square root of x. The blue one is my parent function. I've basically taken this blue function and just drug it to the left one, two, three, four places. So if the parent function x was greater than zero, now you can see we can go all the way over here on our on our graph, four to the left. So that's another way to think about it, but you can also see that on either the parent function or this example, radical x plus four, the y values are always positive. All right, let's find the domain and range for the next one. Again, if you do this graphically, you could probably just look at the graph and see that it's going to end up shifting three units to the right. So we suspect that our range, or excuse me, our domain would be from three to infinity. But let's do it algebraically. X minus three must be zero or positive. When I add three to both sides, x is greater than or equal to three. That gives me my lower limit on that interval. Interval. When I put that back in to find the range, we end up with f of three is the square root of three take away three, which is zero. So my range is going to be from zero to infinity. Probably noticing a pattern here. This problem is different because not only are we adding six inside the radical, we're also adding two outside the radical. We can't just put these two together, obviously, because this, this constant is under the radical and this constant is outside the radical. So let's set just the part under the radical Let's say that has to be positive as we find the domain. X plus six must be greater than or equal to zero. When I subtract six, X must be greater than or equal to negative six. So my domain is negative six to infinity. Now I'm going to look at the range. F of negative six is the square root of negative six plus six plus two. This gives me zero plus two, which gives me two. So my range is from two to infinity. And if we look at that on a graph, I'm gonna leave my parent function, y equals the square root of x plus six 
plus 2. This green graph has been shifted 6 to the left and up 2. So instead of my y values being greater than 0, now my graph doesn't even start until I get to 2 on the y-axis. From here up, there's green graph. But if I'm down here, there's no green graph down in this range, down in this area. There's no green graph. Let's talk about these transformations and see if we can figure out some patterns just looking at them. A lot of what's written in this key concept chart is a little abstract because we're dealing with just variables and no numbers. It makes a little bit more sense in my opinion to look at it with numbers first and then go back and see how these rules can apply. Let's just use the graphing calculator to graph this function. I'm going to use the Desmos calculator first. X minus 2 and then add 5. All right. Again, if I need, I can turn off my parent function if it's in the way just by clicking on it. But you can see that this green graph is the same as the blue graph but it's been shifted to the right two and up five. This number under the radical controls the horizontal translation. It controls whether it goes left or right. The number outside the radical controls if it goes vertical, up or down. And vertical is very intuitive. If you add a number, it's going to go up. If you subtract a number, it's going to go down. So I'm going to put that off to the side here. Add a number outside. The graph will go up. Subtract a number. Outside. The graph is going to go down. And you can see here in the abstract, if k is positive, it goes up. If k is negative, it goes down. Makes much sense. Under the radical, it's like basically the opposite. If we have x take away 2, it's going to go to the right 2. If this was x plus 2, that would make it go left 2. So what happens under the radical is kind of the opposite of what you think. And the reason that is, is because of the main parent function formula here. So I like to say that when we have x plus a number, we go left. When you see x take away a number, we're going to go right that many units. So this one, if we look at our Desmos calculator, we can look at a table of values. Let me, um, oh, nope, I didn't want to do that. I just pressed the button right up here at the top that had the gear. When you press that and then press the table, it'll give you a whole list of values. Now notice for negative numbers, it's undefined. At zero, it's undefined because if I put a zero here, this would not, we would have the square root of negative two. Same with one. Once I put a two in, I get the point five. So I'm going to also put three, four. I'm just hitting enter, 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 enter. And our goal is to plot points with integer coordinates two, five, three, six, six, seven. These are all nice points to plot on our graph. 2, 5, 3, 6, 6, 7. 2, 5, 3, 6, 6, 7. Let's see if we can find any more points. I'm going to just keep hitting enter. The next one is 11, 8. 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I fell off the graph, but I'll, I'll make it work. Eleven, eight would be up here. And then we just connect our points and put an arrow on the end. Let's think about the domain. Since we have a graph, we don't need to think of it algebraically. We can just look at our graph. Look at the x-axis first. As I go from left to right, I don't have blue graph above me until I get to this point. So from here to the right is my domain. This number right here, that number is 2. So my domain is from 2 to infinity. My range, now I'm looking at the y-axis. I start at the bottom and I go up. I don't have any blue graph next to me until I get to this point. And from here up, there's blue graph on the side. This point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my range is from 5 to infinity. The next one, we have a little bit more happening than simply a vertical and horizontal translation. On the next one, we are adding a number inside the radical. We are subtracting a number outside the radical, but we also have some other stuff happening here. So let's address each part individually. We know that subtracting a number outside that's going to cause a vertical translation or a vertical shift down one. We know that adding three inside, as we've just discussed, means there's a horizontal shift. And remember, we do the opposite, left three. But what does this negative sign out front, what happens there? Let's go back to our key concept here. And it says that if A, A is that number out front, if this number out front before the radical is negative, it's reflected across the x-axis. So this graph is getting flipped over the x-axis. Instead of being a function like we've graphed where they start here and go up to the right, it's going to start and go down because it's flipped over. That's what we're expecting because of the negative sign. So this negative in indicates a reflection over the x-axis. How about this number two? What does that do? Well, if you check your key concept, if that number is bigger than 1, 2 is bigger than 1, it's stretched vertically. That means instead of just being a function like this, it's going to be stretched up a little bit, stretched vertically by a scale factor of 2. So this causes our vertical stretch. So let's type this into Desmos and see what it looks like. I'm going to get rid of that function. I'm going to type y equals negative 2 times the square root. x, and I forget what my function is already, x plus 3 minus 1. x plus 3 right arrows. I need to stay under there. x plus 3, right arrow to get out of the radical, minus 1. Notice looking at our blue parent function compared to our red new function, it has been reflected, so it's flipped over. It's shifted left 3, down 1, and it's a little bit stretched. 
So if we look at a table of values, we will have some nice numbers that we can plot. Negative 2, negative 3. Nope, and I just realized that the graph may have cut off, so I'm going to the next page. Negative 2, negative 3, to graph this actually. Uh, let's see, the next nice integer coordinate point, 1, negative 5. And I'm out of points, but I'll continue on. Three, four, five, six, negative seven. That's a nice integer point. Over to six, down to seven. All right, can we get any more nice points by hitting enter? 13, negative 9, that's going to fall off my graph, so I'm just going to start with these. Um, actually, I'm also going to go up in my graph. Negative 2 was this point. Let's see if I can't capture that point. Let's see if I type negative 3. Oh yes, negative 3, negative 1 is a nice point, which we expected to have on our graph. So now I will just connect these. And let's talk about our domain and range. Just looking at the graph. Okay, again, as I move from left to right, I don't have graph underneath me until here. And from here to the right, I have graph underneath me. So that is from negative three to infinity. My range, my Y values, now I'm thinking about my Y values. I'm going to start at the top this time because it's been reflected. I don't have any graph next to me until I get down here. From here down, I have graph. I have the, the function graphed. So that is from negative one down to negative infinity. So think about a number line. Negative infinity would happen first all the way to negative one. So do you see when, when it's been reflected over the x-axis, our range is actually going to have the negative infinity on the left and the number on the right. So be careful with that. That does make a difference. Next video, we will learn the details about graphing cube root functions.